What's up everyone, uh, Jonathan Barkhan and Ted Henschke. We just got back from the Microsoft Showcase and we want to tell you about everything that we saw. We're going to go over some reactions, we're going to talk about what we, uh, what we witnessed and see what's going to be awesome in the horror gaming world over the next year or so. Yeah, hell of a lot to talk about today. We, they had 60 games showcased at the Microsoft uh, press conference, 34 of those being like exclusives uh, or world firsts, one of the two. A lot of them for the Xbox Game Pass. Yeah, yeah, that was a big thing that they are pushing this year was the Xbox Game Pass, that um, a lot of these games are going to be launching on the Game Pass. So if you have the Game Pass, then you're going to be able to play these, I think, without having to like buy the $60 disc, right? That's what that, that that's, means. That's kind of what it seems like. Yeah, yeah it's like a You just get a subscription for $14.99, yeah. and then you get, what was it, Xbox Live, Xbox Game Pass, and there was a third thing that you got. It was all Yeah, it was one. the PC Game Pass, too, which yeah. is something we're going to be talking about as we go on here. So um, Real quick, I do want to mention real quick that uh, I know that Ted just mentioned that there are 60 games. Not all of them are horror-related. We're not going to go one by one. There are a ton that have absolutely no reference to the Dread Central audience, but there are some that are absolute bangers that look yeah. amazing. So we definitely need to highlight those. So I got my little notes here where I just listed kind of what everything that we saw, and we're going to be going over... Some of the bigger titles here, and then we'll do kind of a lightning round at the end to go over some of the smaller stuff. Yeah. Uh, first off to talk about was the first game that they showcased, which was Outer Worlds. I mean, it's an interesting looking game. I mean, it's sci-fi, it's action, you know, what? If, if you're into that kind of an experience, it's... I mean, so, first off, it's being made by Obsidian Studio, which everyone that's familiar with Obsidian Studio will remember it from uh, the Fallout New Vegas game that is one of the fan favorites for that series. I mean, if you talk to anyone that is, like, kind of more hardcore into the Fallout fandom. They really like Fallout 1, love Fallout 2, were a little bit more iffy on 3 and 4, but they always love New Vegas. And that was because of a lot of the different dialogue options you had and the way that you could customize your character. I'm looking to see if they bring that customization I to I will say, I love New Vegas. My only issue is that it glitched and my save was screwed. Well, yeah, it's a, it's a Fallout game. <laughs> they, you, you have to wait three years for the patches to come out, and even yeah. then it'll probably break. So if that's the case, then Outer Worlds uh, is looking great, and I will be excited to play it in 2022. Well, no, it comes out on October 25th. Well, I mean, yeah, but then we got to wait for the patches. Yeah, make the sure patches. It all works. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, I get the joke. Um, but the one of the cool things I wanted to bring up is that if you watch the trailer, it looks like the combat in the game is not just your standard shooter fare. We saw, like, a shrink gun coming up, uh, and we also saw, like, a really big emphasis on player choice. There was this moment where the guy was like, Thank you for helping me, and it gave you a gun. You could use that gun to kill him. They even said you can be a villain, you can be a hero, yeah. you can be a psychopath. And I think when people heard that Obsidian was making a new RPG, that's what they were looking for, was that a, that choice. Um, and I swear to God, watch the trailer, and when you see the facial animations, you're going to get Fallout New Vegas vibes, for better or for worse. Okay, I mean, I'll be honest, though, uh, when we were looking at it, I was kind of thinking, is this the new Borderlands? Are they teasing this? Because there were some vibes that I was getting from that. But as the trailer went on, it definitely stands on its own. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you're going to be getting a, a Borderlands clone with it. But I, I think yeah. that, so I think that there's a lot there for fans of New Vegas and other Obsidian titles. to. And really they made it look like it's just so much fun to kill people. Yeah, it does look It looks like you're going to have a lot of fun taking people out. Yeah, yeah. Um, next up, we had what was probably the most surprising announcement of the whole show was the Blair Witch game. Okay. That had us on the edge of our seats. Yeah. Everything about it looked amazing. And the thing is, we didn't know what was coming until there was that shot of the guy using the camcorder on the person standing in the corner. Yeah. And we all went, either this is Blair Witch or this is a serious homage. Serious homage. We were thinking that it might have been Outlast 3. Well, I was thinking Outlast 3 when I first saw it just because of the camera coming up. Yeah. And that is kind of the, you know, the, the telltale Outlast mechanic was the camera. Yeah. Um, and then you saw the stuff with the time loop. Like, I'm really interested to see where they go with kind of the the lore of Blair Witch. Well, this is what's really interesting about this Blair Witch game, is that there were Blair Witch games in the past, but they felt tonally wildly inconsistent from the actual films. Yeah. This actually feels like people are going to be playing the movie. And let's not forget that the development studio behind it is Bloober Team, which yep. is the studio behind Observer. Layers of Fear has really a great pedigree when it comes to horror, so I'm actually really excited to see what they're Yeah, they, and the thing is, every one of their games feels fantastic. Like, mm -hmm. the lighting is great, the graphics are fantastic, and they have a... Layers of Fear 2 is a perfect example of how they like to play with expectations. You'll be going down a hallway, you reach a dead end, you turn around, it's something completely really different, different yeah. and you have no idea what to expect, yeah. and that's perfect for the Blair Witch universe. Yeah, and it's like... I, I'm usually not a big fan of, like, movie tie-ins, but at this point, like... Blair Witch as a franchise is such a blank slate to work with. I mean, you have The Witch, 
you have being lost in a forest, and pretty much after, uh, other than that... You have weird time inconsistencies. Yeah, you can pretty much do whatever you want, so I'm really excited to see where they take it as a studio. Yeah, this is going to be something that we are very excited for, we're going to keep a very close eye on, and believe me when I say we'll be writing a lot about it. Yeah. So next up, uh, we have something that I know Jonathan over here is super excited about, Ori and the Will of the Wisps. The Will of the Wisps, yes. Uh, so I'm going to be completely honest, I have not played any of the Ori games, the Ori and the, the Blind Forest, Forest. Yeah. but the thing is, I love the soundtrack, I love the visual aesthetic, I've seen a lot of trailers, I've seen some playthroughs, and it's just one of those games where this feels like a work of art. Yeah, and I mean, if you, if you even if you look at the original Ori and the Blind Forest, it's like so much of that game was about the juxtaposition between the light and the dark, and it, it yeah. really created this uh, gaming experience that was was terrifying at times, but also deeply emotive. And I think that they're really yes. nailing this with the next Ori. You have these like kind of like very childlike moments where Ori's riding on like a adorable little bird, and then you'll have like this like weird grotesque fire monster that he's fighting. And then the gigantic feet. spider. Why spiders? Yeah. What and is what is going on? We don't need spiders. Well, Limbo did it, so now everyone has to. Do it. Oh, uh, uh, you no. Two D side scroller. No have spider. Developers, stay away from spiders for a while. My own personal sanity, I'm, I'm, please. I'm, I'm okay with the spiders. Keep going. It's like uh, Skyrim's dragons. You gotta have more spiders and horror. Anyways, uh, but yeah, that's just one I know that a lot of people are going to really be excited for. Yeah. Um, next up, I got my notes here because there were like 60 games. So many games. Yeah, so many games. Uh, we had, oh, cool. This is one I kind of wanted to bring up was Bleeding Edge, the Ninja Theory new 4v4 melee fighter yeah. shooter thing. It's, well, this is what I like. Okay, we're in this uh, period of games right now where it's all about battle royale. It's all about a lot of people all against each other. Or you have little teams, but it's a bunch of teams. And this is going to be far more contained. Mm -hmm. It's 4v4, which automatically makes it far more intimate. And you're just going to... I yeah. think it's a bit more exciting, because you'll probably just get a bunch of your friends together rather than, rather than some random group of people that you have no idea who yeah. you're playing against. Yeah, and I... So we saw, like, a pretty robust roster, roster of characters so far. I have no idea how they're going to play. I haven't actually seen... Other than the gameplay we saw at the press conference, I haven't seen any of the behind-the-scenes gameplay yet. Um, I love the style. Yeah, it's of the super stylish. Characters, because you can tell that they are that they're really into you know cyborgs and robots and things like yeah. that. Yeah, but they're also huge horror fans. Yeah, it's they're really these like, you know, I, I I when I was looking at all the characters, I was imagining that scene in the cabin in the woods where you see all those like different killers and the different boxes. Yeah, and you just see like glimpses of them, and I'm like, I wonder how that dude kills people. I wonder how that monster kills people. That's how I was feeling looking at the cast of this. Is I really just want to see how they all play. It reminds me also of a scene from Rick and Morty where Rick is trying to convince Morty that he can turn into a car at a moment's notice, and then suddenly at the end of the episode, after the credits, Rick's sitting there in class, and something happens, and he suddenly turns into a car, and he's freaking out. He's just kind of looking like, what is going on? And I think some kids are like crushed by it, but that's the kind of yeah. feeling that I've got is, what are they capable yeah, of? Yeah, what are they going to do? That's, that's, I, I'm, I'm, and here's the thing also about this game. Ninja Theory has, is a studio that has made really great titles. And I mean yes. that. I, I, don't, I don't usually call games great. But, like, you know, games like Heavenly Sword, uh, Enslaved Odyssey to the West, uh, Hellblade, these are games that are more than just products. Like, so often you're looking at these 4v4 multiplayer games and you're thinking, this is a game that's being made to be sold. And all of the uh, Ninja Theory's games have focused on this great facial animation, really interesting concepts, and I've, I've really liked every single one of their they games. They put a lot of themselves into it. They really want to make sure that this is a game that people will have fond memories of for a very long time. Yeah, and so with 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 this new genre that they're going into, they've never made a multiplayer fighter before, so I'm interested to see what they come up with. It will be interesting just because they have been, I mean, I think we can say that they've been par for par. Every game has been really solid. Yeah. So we can assume that this is also going to be a fantastic game. We just need to know what they can do with something new and innovative for them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing, you know, how the game all pans out and to see how they bring their unique kind of caring um, into this this format of game. Especially I mean, a format where the whole point is to not care. You just have to <laughs> kill everyone. You just have to kill everyone, yeah. yeah. yeah but there's always just been a studio that gives a huge shit about coming out with a good, solid product and I'm really looking forward to see how they do it. Huge shit, that. solid product. I get where you're going there. <laughs> the, you're, you're a more clever man than I. Uh, <laughs> next up we have, which was probably the most talked about thing of the show, 
Cyberpunk 2077. Which just looks incredible. Yeah. I mean, even without Keanu Reeves, which is, by the way, was amazing yeah. being in that audience when he walked out and the, everyone lost their minds, the game itself yeah. looks stunning. If you haven't taken the time to sit through the press conference yet, it's worth it just for Keanu Reeves to be walking out. I mean... And, and for him to lose his mind and just sit there like, Cyberpunk! That's yeah. the new meme going on right He's now. He's the most adorable man in Hollywood. Yes. And we have to support him, no matter what. What so did someone scream, like, you're breathtaking? And he was like, no, you're breathtaking. You're, breathtaking. you're all breathtaking. Actually, there's a little bit of behind the scenes. When I got the, the release email about the release date of 2077, the headline was, you're all breathtaking. So they, they're definitely running with that. It was, all right. It was a, it was a you know, little large, unforgettable moment in gaming, I'd yes, say. Yes, that, was, calling me that was one of those moments that will just be a highlight yeah. of video game reactions for a long time to come. Yeah, yeah, and I know there's no way to verify this, but I swear he looked exactly at me when he said it. So I, I mean, we were sitting next to each other. I thought he looked at me. Yeah, he was looking at both of us, actually. Okay, I'll take that. Yeah. Anyways, um, but yeah, the what do we think of the game? I mean, we didn't see a lot of gameplay for Cyberpunk no. this year, but we got to see more of the proof of concept of like what we're going to be getting with Cyberpunk. I mean, the game's not coming out for almost a year. Yeah. Uh, and so they have a lot of time left to work on it. And we actually, uh, as a bit of a spoiler for later in the week, we have an appointment to go see the game yeah. on Thursday, so I'll have definitely more info of what it looks like. But, you know, when we first saw that first trailer, we saw the, the, the lady with the bullets bouncing off her face and the arm blades coming out. Hadn't seen any of those arm blades since then, and now we got to see them in this trailer in the kind of the proof of concept. And we got to see work. them very much in action. Yeah, so they, they, they do murder the crap out of some guys. So that was yeah. pretty cool. And, I mean, the CD Projekt Red, the... Studio behind The Witcher, they once again a studio that gives a shit. Clearly yes. gives a shit about their products. I mean, this game has been in development for how long now? Forever. I mean, I remember that the trailer for twenty seventy seven came out before even The Witcher three like hit shelves. Yeah. So this game has been they've been working on it for a long time, and I'm really excited to be able to like just bring you guys more info of what it looks like on Thursday. Yeah, it's it's there's a reason that it's one of the most highly anticipated video game titles in quite a while. Yeah. So what else do we got here, real quick? Oh. uh... Something that a lot of fans of the indie scene are going to be a big fan of. Tim Schafer came on stage to yeah. announce that Double Fine has been uh, acquired by Microsoft Game Studios to make Psychonauts 2. I mean, this is a game that has... Psychonauts 1 has been around for a long, for time, a long time. And it is a game that is... A lot of people, they have those games that they think back on their childhood. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, it's Castlevania 2. For a lot of people, it's Final Fantasy 7. For a lot of people, it's Psychonauts. So this sequel looks to capture that same kind of feel. It's got that same quirky sort of visual aesthetic. Mm -hmm. It's got that humor. It's got that weirdness. It seems like it's going to be exactly what people are hoping from for a sequel. Yeah. Well, I mean, and here's the thing is that people have been waiting for a Psychonaut sequel for a long time. I mean, I remember yeah. in college when I was getting into my whole games as art thing, Psychonauts was what everyone always brought up when they were talking about a game that was art. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, we've just been waiting for so long for a follow-up. I mean, Double Fine came out with Brutal Legend. They came out with, uh, what was it, Double Age, something like that. Um, their adventure game, they came out with Stacking, which was like a little puzzle game, which was cute. But, um, like, we've really been waiting for the next Psychonauts, and now it's yeah. finally coming. And, um, I don't know, I mean, it's, it looks like a great mix of kooky and crazy and really dark. I mean, so the original Psychonauts really went places, and I'm really looking forward yes. to seeing if they do the same. That's the thing, is that just because it's quirky and charming doesn't mean that it's not serious and dark as hell. Mm -hmm. Like, there is a lot going on behind Psychonauts, and now, in today's day and age, I think Psychonauts 2 can venture into some really interesting territories and yet have the defense of, oh, we're a kind of cute little video yeah, game. Yeah, you can't take it too seriously because yeah. it's Psychonauts and Tim Schafer is, like, verifiably a crazy person in the best kind of way. <laughs> and uh, everyone loves him for it. That's, that's why he's the head of Double Fine, yep. you know? Um, moving on, let's talk about one of the other big announcements. Uh, we have the new Gears of War 5 uh, Escape multiplayer mode. Um, what were your thoughts on seeing all that? So it's interesting because I love the Gears of War games, uh, mm -hmm. at least majority of them, uh, and what we saw wasn't an actual gameplay footage of mm -hmm. this mode. We saw a really stylized cinematic mm -hmm. of what it's supposed to capture, and it looks really interesting. You can use traps, you've got uh, just all sorts of amazing abilities. I think that's the most important part, is now these characters have their own individual abilities. Mm -hmm. So we saw that one... Uh, woman that she suddenly got like Electro, lightning, electro, knife, yeah. yeah, electro powers 
going through her, and it's really exciting and adventurous, but at the same time, how does that fit into the world of Gears of War? Yeah, how it fits in, I have no idea. I, I missed Gears of War 4, and now I have no idea what's going on. I've played all the other Gears of War. I thought it was about bug monsters from Deep Within the Earth <laughs> and dudes with chainsaws. Now apparently you have to surrender to a lizard monster, and then you fight robots with, like, death gas. I don't know. I guess that's what the plot is now, but it looks like there's going to be people still getting chainsawed in half. And, like, really core of Gears of War, I want to, like, chainsaw a dude in half. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the ultimate thing. The main focus of Gears of War has... For a lot of people, they think Marcus Phoenix. For a lot of people, mm -hmm. they think of all of the violence in action. No, it's that gun with a chainsaw. With a chainsaw, on it. yeah. That's a very iconic part of the Gears of War franchise, and it's because you want to go up and you want to saw people in half. That's what a lot of these action games that had you crouching and then shooting and then crouching and shooting. That's what they didn't have. Gears mm -hmm. of War was sort of that bridge between the hide and shoot and the new Doom that put, kind of made you go into yeah. the middle of it, it was that middle ground. You would hide and shoot, but then you'd take that chainsaw, run up, and just slice someone in half. Yeah, so... And it was great! Yeah, I just want all the guns to have different kinds of edged weapons on it, and then I can just beat people with all kinds of guns. All right, lightning sounds... round then. Immediate lightning round, just because I need to get it out there. If you could take a gun, and if you could take a weird t weapon and put them together, what would you do? I would make a gun that shoots chainsaws. Okay, I think that's a bit ludicrous. No, that's great. I mean, Painkiller had, like, the stake gun that, like, made things explode, and... Borderlands. Borderlands? Did the Borderlands have a chainsaw gun? Uh, no, they had exploding rounds. Exploding? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 I know, a gun that Fired swords, that's what it was. Fired swords, there we go. Or a gun that shoots guns. I mean, I think I'm okay with a, you know, a big Bowie knife that has a scope on it. Ooh, yeah. I think that would be a good one. Sorry. Either that, or I want a shotgun that is also attached to a scythe. That'd be cool. Yeah, I, mean, I would I like scythe, I would like scythe shotgun. Yeah, that would yeah. be the that scythe would, gun. The scythe. No, gun. it doesn't work that well. Yeah, yeah I, I just imagine it's it would look scythe. ridiculous. You kind of you kind of get to like gunblade territory, like Squall's gunblade from Final yes, Fantasy. Yes, exactly. Eight. And I just dated myself there, so you know, I'm getting <laughs> old. Uh, so next up, we have the other landmark flagship Microsoft title, Halo Infinite. So I've played a few of the Halo games. I've not played all of them. So my attachment to the Halo series is not as kind of robust and, and excitable as a lot of people out there. That being said, I know how much it means to everyone. I know how long it's been going on. So for there to be a new Halo title, especially with Master Chief, mm -hmm. I think people are losing their minds, and rightfully so. Well, and it's coming up on the back end of the announcement of the new Xbox. And Scarlet. that's, I think, is Project the, Scarlet, I yeah. think that's the biggest thing, is that this is going to be a launch title for Xbox Project Scarlet, which we don't know if that's the official title yet, but that means it's that it's title, going, yeah. yeah, it's the working title, and that means that it's going to have probably astonishing graphics, just amazing, uh, amazing graphical capabilities, and we'll see what um, what comes from it. But overall, Halo has always been a very action-packed franchise with amazing lore, great music, fantastic characters, and they never left the emotion behind. Yeah, I've played all of them. Um, I don't understand what the plot's happening anymore. I know Cortana got like. Robo cancer and now she's crazy because of rampancy, and then all Robo the AI cancer. yeah she got too old and then like AIs can only live for so long so it's like a like her brain becomes a tumor and like it kind of, she goes crazier and crazier and then she like convinced all the other AIs to like revolt and that was the end of Halo Five and then at some point there was a guy called like the Guardian or whatever and then Cortana became a bomb and then like ate him and then she went crazier you know what. It's a video game. I'm okay with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I'm don't, okay with it. See, that's the thing. is like I don't really know what the plot of Halo 6 is going to be, but it's coming on... I mean, it's... They're announcing it to coincide with the Scarlet, which is how you should yes. be doing a console announcement. You have your flagship title. It comes out in conjunction with the new console. That's it gives doing. people a reason to buy the console. Yeah, exactly. And I think that... I mean, I don't know. I don't know if Halo 6 is going to be the console seller that the original Halo Combat Evolved was. But mm -hmm. I think it's cool to see that they are that they have that business model in mind, that they're going to be coming out with this game with the new console for the fans. And, yes. and in terms of the new console, it's got like 40 times the teraflops and 6 billion and more joules of mega energy. I don't know. I don't 1.81 gigawatts or whatever, yeah. 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 And I, I don't really you pour know. pour a beer into it and it'll take you into the future. I'm not the guy to ask about the technical specs of an Xbox, but apparently it's supposed to be four times prettier and... You can Look, go up to it a... sounds impressive. It's yeah. big, it's flashy, it's bright, it's going to kick all of the consoles' asses until the PS5, and then at that point, <laughs> it'll be equal to other consoles. It's going to be a thing. Well, they said it was running at 120 frames per second, which is like 
I know that that's something that people care about. So yeah, that's how. That's something that the PC gamers always mock the console gamers. So for. speaking of PC gamers, we do have yes. to mention that the the what we kind of brought up earlier with the Games Pass. So. Uh, Games Pass, Xbox Game Pass has been a thing that they have for a long time. There's like 100 titles on the Xbox Game Pass. You buy the subscription, you can play these games at any time. Now they're going to be having a separate PC Game Pass. It's going to be bringing um, a lot of the Xbox titles to the PC. Now, for a long time, Xbox has been pushing cross-platform play. You remember that you know, Quantum Break for the Xbox One was on both the Microsoft Store and the Xbox One. But now they're really trying to push more for this integrated ecosystem of Xbox. And the way that they're really showing that is that if you have an Xbox One and uh, already are subscribing to the Game Pass on that, you get the PC Game Pass as well. This $10 PC Game Pass isn't something you have to buy on top of your $15 yeah. Xbox Game Pass. And so, but also if you don't have an Xbox, you can just have this $10 PC Game Pass. Yeah. Yeah. And it's exciting because I mean, the a lot of the PC gaming people have been wanting some of these console exclusive titles. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people on console want to be able to play games with PC crowds, or at the very least to be able to share in some kind yeah. of aspect there. And so this, I think, is going to be the, the big step in that direction. Yeah, and I, I think that, um, you know, the games that they announced with the, the coming out on the PC Pass were, of course, everyone's going to be really excited about Football Manager 2019 <laughs> and uh, Imperator Rome, which the person uh, mispronounced as Imperator, that's Imperator Rome, and uh, which is something I'm excited for because I'm that kind of nerd. But uh, also the Master Chief Collection is coming to the PC. So yeah. that'll be something that people are really excited And it's all for. probably just a huge push for Halo Infinite just to keep it Halo oh, in yeah. people's minds because when was the last time a Halo game came out? Or at least a high-profile Halo ago. game. So uh, The last of the big ones that I want to talk about now is uh, the one that I'm going to be most excited for by far, uh, Elden Ring. It is the new From Software title. Yep. Uh, from the Hideki Miyazaki, the guy that did uh, Dark Souls, you know, from Software's Dark Souls, from Software's Sekiro, from Software's Bloodborne. And don't forget, it's also George R. R. Martin, the man behind Game of Thrones. And Night Flyers. Oh, let's not forget let's Night not Flyers. Let's not forget Night Flyers. But, yeah. but this is kind of. Everyone is in love right now with From Software's Sekiro style of games. Yeah, well, Sekiro, Dark Souls. Yep, Bloodborne yeah. style game. Like these games where it is punishingly brutal combat, but it's not unfair. Yeah. Like if you know what to do, then you can make it through without a problem. But you have to die over and over because you need to learn what to do. And so bringing that in, bringing that kind of style into a Game of Thrones esque world, yeah. I think is going to be something that is going to appeal to a huge audience, especially with the end of Game of Thrones. They want to be able to have that feeling, now they can actually interact with it rather than be yeah. a voyeur. Well, and that's the thing, is that, you know, all the Dark Souls games, plot-wise, are an incomprehensible miasma of nonsense that you have to read text log after text log to get, like, the slightest glimpse of what's going on. So it'll be great that there's finally a video game experience that properly replicates what it's like to read his books. Um, you know, that all being said... I really, really am excited for this game. Like, I, I can, I can, you know, you, you these kinds of games They're are, your jam. Are my jam. Yeah. And the thing is, is that we know what to expect from a From Software game. There's going to be some kind of bonfire where you rest at. There's going to be hard enemies. You're going to have to probably go pick up your corpse when you die in order to reclaim your souls or whatever they use to decide your earth and... Your rings, you have to go pick up all your rings. Your they fall out of your rings. Your Elden rings every yeah. time you it's get It's basically up. like Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, it's Sonic the Hedgehog. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm glad we're in agreement. Tie in for the you know, 20, now 2020 movie got pushed back. <laughs> Sonic movie, hashtag. Um, but anyways, uh, the thing is about the, these kinds of games is that we know what to expect, but that's okay. Like, yeah, a lot of if you have a good product, right. then there's nothing wrong with making it another good product. A lot of people complain about the samey games coming out from, you know, the new Assassin's Creed is just like the old Assassin's Creed, new Call of Duty is just like old Call of Duty. From software games are unique because even though we know what basic mechanics to expect from every game, each of the games has managed to take it to a new level. And I'm really looking forward to seeing it. And it's also because well. they, each one is interesting, exciting. It's not like, let's just make another Call of Duty and it's just more shoot, shoot, bang, bang. In each of these From Software games, there is the lore that you can find if you go after it. Mm -hmm. There are the stories, there are the interesting things, there are the little Easter eggs. Yeah. And it creates this world that feels fresh and original, even if the gameplay style itself yeah. is, by and large, relatively the same. Yeah, and, you know, like I said, we haven't seen any gameplay of it yet, but the pre-rendered cinematic that we had is, like, 
stunning. It's st it's stunning, and it's pure that like Dark Souls kind of just world of once faded glory. You know, it's yes. now in decline, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what they do with this world. Um, so I, I mean, we'll guess we'll just go over to the lightning round. All the other stuff that we're not really going to have a lot of time to talk about. Um, there's a new Minecraft game. It's Diablo Minecraft. Diablo Minecraft, which how can you go wrong? There's a game with two deer. Do, yeah, deers? that one was called deer. a way the a way Fair? to the woods. A way to the woods. Okay, I mean it's it's an escort mission. Yeah, it's well, an escort mission in the game. So I was like watching the trailer for it. and I was like, this is cute. Two deer yes. touching noses yes. and lights come out. But uh, it looked like it was going to some like dark places. You're in these yeah. ruined cities, so it'd be interesting to see just how dark the game goes. Um, also, this is one that fans have been waiting for for a really long time, so uh, that'll be interesting to see. Uh, what else do I got on my little list here? Battletoads. Battletoads. Finally, the GameStop employees can answer yes, we do have Battletoads. I think that's all we need to say about that. <laughs> uh, new Star Wars. You know what? Um, which one? Star Wars uh, Fallen Order. Yep. So, Fallen Order is a game that I'm not, I was not particularly excited about. Um, it's a prequel to Rogue One. I think that's an important thing to mention yeah, as well. Yeah, it's a prequel to Rogue One. I wasn't excited, I mean, I was excited for Star Wars 1313, uh, back when they were going to make an M-rated Star Wars game. That got canned, and I've kind of been bitter at Star Wars ever since. Um, Battlefronts were okay, wasn't a huge fan. But with this, I got we got to see some, like, really, really awesome lightsaber kills. Like, when you were yeah. doing those melee attacks, and it was, like, stabbing it through the side and things... You know, it's it's it's. I don't think this is going to be an M-rated game, but I think this is... I don't is... think any Star Wars can be an M-rated. There was a moment where I was watching the trailer and he bonks the two stormtroopers' heads together. I was like, this is going to be a kid's game and I'm, I'm not on board. Yep. But then he was fighting this this the, the, the Imperial dude with the black and the blazer pike. And he was like slicing him, like stabbing him in the heart. And I was like, all right. But, if it, but just like with every Star Wars, whether you have it in the movies, whether you have it in the games, clearly the winner of the trailer... Is that adorable little droid? Yeah, that's God. in there, like every single time. So we also had a game uh, that well, oh, Wastelands three. Do you ever play Wastelands? I do not. I played Wastelands one and two. They're great. Uh, Wastelands three takes place in Colorado. It's got a new icy theme. Other than that, it looks very similar to Wasteland one and two, which is kind of what Wastelands fans wants: is more Wastelands in new areas. You're going to have that apocalyptic gameplay. Uh, top-down shooter, not shooter, uh, top-down RPG, kind of like the old Fallouts. Uh, I think that it's going to, you know, it's cool that they're doing a Wastelands 3. It's really awesome to see a franchise that gets revived like Wastelands by a passionate fan studio do so well. So it's, I just like seeing that they're coming out with it. I mean, I'm just excited that you're excited. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I, like I said, I'm that kind of nerd that plays <laughs> Wastelands and Imperator to Rome. Um, by the way, shout out to Total War Three Kingdoms. Uh, I've been playing a ludicrous amount of that. Um, Next up, we have, uh, do you want to talk about Dragon Ball Z Kakarot? I mean, I'm not a Dragon Ball Z type person, but it looks like a Dragon Ball Z show. It looks like a Dragon Ball Z movie. And it looks like you're going to do a lot of colossal damage. Well, here's the thing, is that this is the first time we're seeing a Dragon Ball Z RPG. Action RPG. This yes. isn't a fighting game. This is an action RPG. I mean, let's be honest. The trailer made it seem like there is a enormous amount of fighting. Yeah. But then again, that's what Dragon Ball Z is known for yeah. are some really amazing and incredible and epic battles. I, the fact that there is going to be more to that, that's where I'm interested. Because if they can get the battles right, then people might forgive everything else if yeah. that doesn't live up to the same kind of esteem. So I was seeing the flying battles and, you know, Frieza shooting the, the, the laser, the Kai Blasts and Goku dodging. And here's what I thought. It was, I was like, you know what this looks like? This reminds me of Dragon Ball Z mixed with Zone of the Enders. And thank you, oh, one wow. guy that got that. Because that's what I'm looking for, is like a flying Dragon Ball Z game with a lot of movement, a lot of mobility, and that tight, fast, quick combat. That's what I really I, want. I played the shit out of Zone Avengers when it came out. Yeah, yeah. So there's your one guy. They found my one guy. <laughs> Good thing we're here together. Um, oh, and then the last thing I want to talk about, this would be a great place to end. Yeah. Um, just a well, real quick shout before we do that. State of Decay, State of Decay 2 has new uh, DLC in Heartland. I'm not going to really talk about it because it's already out, so you can go play it right now if you want. But you play as two different characters, and there's zombies with giant blood fountains coming out of their necks. So, how can you go wrong? There yeah. You go. What's, what's, um, what's there to miss about that? For you, other the other, so anyone that understood my zone of the Enders reference will uh, like that Fantasy Star Online Two is coming to the Xbox One. It's one of the earliest console RPGs. That'll be fun. Uh, MMO RPGs. Uh, apparently, Crossfire is the most played shooter in the world. Crossfire X or whatever. Well, Crossfire X is coming to Xbox One. Apparently, 660 million. 
East Asian players play Crossfire from Smilegate Studios. Isn't, wasn't this like that board game Crossfire? You will get caught up in the. Uh, okay, yep. yeah, it's 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 the shooter version of that, but with surreal underwater combat. I have no and, idea. And 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 like military aspects, but yeah. you can also move super quick, and there's kind of invisible soldiers. I have no idea. Who knows? I didn't know that that game that I was playing with all the metal balls yeah. and the spinny things was that intense. Um, I gotta revisit it. Yeah, we also have Borderlands 3, which I'm not gonna really talk about here because we have a hands-on with Borderlands coming out later this week. Plus it's gotten four. so much attention. I mean, here, it's Borderlands. If you like Borderlands, you're gonna like this. Yeah, there's a new DLC for Borderlands that should be out, I think, like now. Or Borderlands like 2, yeah. yeah. It's, it's uh, I think, coming out tonight. And it is the bridge between Borderlands 2 yeah. and Borderlands 3, and it focuses on Lilith, I Yeah, say. Lilith's happy yep. fun times fighting the bad guys. <laughs> I haven't played Borderlands 2 in, like, forever. Uh, and then the last thing I wanted to bring up was 12 minutes. Okay, 12 minutes looks fantastic. Yeah. And it's so interesting. Uh, for everyone who saw the trailer, you saw how it works. It's just a top-down of an apartment room, and it's two people having dinner, and she's trying to surprise him with clothes for a new uh, for a newborn yeah. because she's pregnant and he starts kind of foretelling the future and everything that's gonna go on and it just gets weirder and weirder and weirder and you figure out that there is either time travel or reincarnation yeah. or it's this weird thriller and I have this I'm just really intrigued by what yeah. they're gonna do with this yeah it's I am too I I really like Annapurna as a as a publisher I've liked a lot of the games that they've come out with. Um, State of Mind is a really interesting... Uh, wait, no, that's Datalik. Excuse me there. But Annapurna Terrible, has come out with a lot of really, really great games. And I'm really interested to see this like distilled concept. You know, some of the best horror games that we have are games that just take a single idea... And, and they, do it and they really, do it really well. well. You know, like Layers of Fear is how spooky can we make these hallways and turning around. Um, you know, say what you will about Five Nights at Freddy's, but it takes still images and turns it into a terrifying horror experience. So many great horror games are just this idea and then they expand on it. Well, that's the thing is when it comes to horror, you get a very simple idea, but you make that simple idea so complexly terrifying and you make it seem so much larger than what it actually is. Yeah. And I think this is a phenomenal example because we got glimpses of where the, there, there are doors in this room but we saw barely into them because, yeah, the doors would open, but the light wouldn't penetrate. Yeah. There's a window, and, yeah, we see cars drive by, yeah. but they're murky and unclear. You never get an idea of what's going on. But we got to see some really interesting different potentials. You know, the guy comes in and kills you in the first potential. Yep. In another one, you're hiding in the kitchen. In another one, it shows that you can kill your wife, and you're sitting on the floor crying as the police come. In another one, you're having sex with her in the other room. There's, like, all these different places you can go, and it's going to be interesting to see just how like how much they explore that concept of these 12 minutes. And I think what would be really fascinating is how far we can go with additional scenarios. Like if they start creating a series of games where yeah, you have 12 minutes to figure out what's going on before it resets and then you can just go in all sorts of different directions, the amount of stories that they can mm -hmm. delve into yeah. is just it's endless. Yeah, yeah, I am really looking forward to that one. So, um I will be sure to be telling you more as we find out about it. Yep. Um, that being said, overall impressions of the showcase, how did you feel about it? I mean, Keanu Reeves came out on stage. It's it, it's amazing. It was yeah. wonderful. Uh, but seriously speaking, there were a lot of games that were just fantastic to see where they're going with it. Blair Witch was a shocker, yeah. but it was just this amazing surprise that looks fantastic. Uh, I love the look of Ori, so I'm really excited to see what they're doing with that, even though I hate spiders, and that was a gigantic, <laughs> terrifying-looking arachnid. Uh, yeah, I would say that when it comes to a showcase, I would say that Microsoft kind of did an amazing job. Yeah, there were a couple of games that I wish weren't in their big montage in the middle. They had this like indie game montage. We saw Felix the yeah. Reaper, Dead Static Drive. I'm really looking forward to seeing what those really are, um, and a lot of others that I just didn't really have time to... There was like... 10 second clips of it. So I'm really excited to see what those are. I mean, they had 60 titles that they had to show, so they crammed about 30 of them yeah. into a three minute video. And and look, for, for people that have been following E3 every year, like we've kind of come to expect a certain kind of showcase from Microsoft. And yeah. the big three, usually Nintendo's showing off a couple big games. Sony usually focuses on uh, their big show-stopping titles, a couple of surprise announcements. Mm -hmm. And Microsoft has been kind of struggling to find its footing for a while now. It's uh, usually a showcase of their new developers, 
a couple exclusives, a car always comes down from somewhere. It, it's just, this is what we expect from a Microsoft show. However, it's worth mentioning that Sony isn't taking the stage this year. They aren't, yes. they aren't represented at E3 this year. So Microsoft had this opportunity here to really step up and fill the hole that Sony was leaving. And I really think that they did. I mean, they, they showed a lot of games, games that I'm excited about. They didn't focus too much on the weird kind of techie stuff they always do. There's always like some kind of showcase of a new controller, of their new uh, which systems and functionality. Which they showed a new which controller. Which they did. But, but it, was, it, was a, it was a cool presentation. It's yeah. something that I can see a lot of people getting excited about. It was quick. It gave you the important information, and it went back to focusing on the game. And that's the important thing. It was just a video of the controller. There wasn't any talking about it. There wasn't anyone demonstrating it. It wasn't drawn out. Mm -hmm. It was just, here's a video. We have a new controller. It's badass. Back to the games. Yeah, and especially because this is an E3 that we're kind of all holding our breath for the next generation of consoles. Yeah. Having them have such a strong focus on the games was was great. It was refreshing. It was what I wanted from a Microsoft showcase year after year. Mm -hmm. They've been getting better year after year, and this year I really think they nailed it. They did a great job. Yeah. There's nothing more to say. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, all thank right. you guys for joining us tonight. You want to do an thank outro? You. Uh, yeah, basically, thank you all so much. Uh, this has been our coverage of the Microsoft showcase. We're going to go ahead and... Uh, check out Bethesda and let you know our thoughts. We're not expecting to talk about too many titles, but there are some great ones yeah. that we're going to spend some time on. Yeah. So we will see you in the next video.